For a while, I have wanted to put two films in conversation with each other, like a comparative essay. I knew that Ang Lee's 2005 film Brokeback Mountain was to be one of them, and that I would compare and contrast it to a British counterpart. I thought I would use Francis Lee's 2017 film God's Own Country due to its similar setting to Brokeback, an open outdoor countryside, and the hard laboring work life of animal husbandry. If you leave it, it will get infected with disease. While God's Own Country does merit an analysis, I thought a film that was perhaps a step removed from the world of Brokeback would fare better in a comparative essay. So I began to look back on a slightly older catalogue of queer films, and landed on James Ivory's 1987 film Maurice. In my last video, we saw Ivory's writing in effect with Call Me By Your Name, but here he acts as a director. So what are the similarities and dissimilarities between Brokeback Mountain and Maurice, and how does their genres enhance their queer stories? Before I begin, I want to say two disclaimers. The first one being that there are major spoilers for Brokeback Mountain and Maurice ahead. Oh, come Victoria! Come. The second being that I'm going to pronounce Maurice as Maurice, instead of the British pronunciation Morris, which is how they pronounce it in the film. How dare you bully your mother, Maurice? You ought to be horsewhipped. Because it sounds too much like Morris to me. Film Gaze is a new channel created to focus on some of the film industry's most influential queer artists, characters, and stories. We are a new channel, so like and subscribe if you want to see more, and comment possible topics below. Maurice tells the story of the titular character coming to terms with his own sexuality in Edwardian England. In 1909, Maurice Hall, played by James Wilby, meets a young man named Clive Durnham, played by Hugh Grant, while attending Cambridge University. Clive admits his feelings for Maurice, who initially rebuffs the approach. Understand what? That I love you. I'm told rubbish. But then embraces it. Durham, I love you. After a while, Clive fears being exposed as a homosexual and ends the relationship with Maurice. By continuing like this, you and I are risking everything we have. Maurice then seeks medical attention to cure his homosexuality, but he is unsuccessful, especially when he meets the lower class under gamekeeper Alex Scudder. Happy birthday, sir! Maurice and Scudder, after some complications, end up running away together, while Clive reminisces on his time with Maurice. Maurice was released in 1987 and was written by Kit Hesketh Harvey and James Ivory, based off the E.M. Forrester novel of the same name. Forrester wrote the novel in 1913 through 1914, but resisted publication due to the UK's legal attitudes towards homosexuality. The novel would eventually be published posthumously in 1971. The film was financially and critically successful, and received awards at the Venice Film Festival, and was nominated for Best Costume Design at the 60th Academy Awards in 1988. The legacy of the film has been impactful, both in regards to the film's quality and the boldness of depicting a gay love story at the height of the AIDS crisis. For many gay men coming of age in the 80s and 90s, Maurice was revelatory, a first glimpse on screen or anywhere of what love between men could look like. Do you ever dream you had a friend? Someone to last your whole life? 18 years after Maurice came out, Brokeback Mountain was released. In 1963, Cowboys Ennis Del Mar, played by Heath Ledger, and Jack Twist, played by Jake Gyllenhaal, are hired to work together to herd sheep through the summer on the Brokeback Mountains. The two end up drunkenly having sex one night and develop an emotional and physical relationship. The two part and independently get married to women, but then meet sporadically with each other over the years and reignite their love affair. Eventually, however, Jack dies, and Ennis is left only with his memories of Jack and their time together on Brokeback Mountain. 
Brokeback Mountain was released in 2005 and was written by Diana Osana and Larry McMurtry based off a short story of the same name by Annie Prue. The short story was published in the New Yorker magazine in 1997 and was highly praised after its publication. Like Maurice, Brokeback Mountain would also be a commercial and critical success, but to a much greater extent. At the 78th Academy Awards in 2006, the film was nominated for eight Academy Awards and won for three. Original score... And the Oscar goes to... Gustavo Santolaja for Brokeback Mountain. Adapted screenplay. And the Oscar goes to Larry McMurtry, <laughs> Diana Osana for Brokeback Mountain. And director. And the Oscar goes to Ang Lee for Brokeback Mountain. As Maurice was praised for depicting gay love in difficult times for the community, Brokeback Mountain is one of the seminal films that brought queer cinema to the mainstream in the 21st century. Lee has taken a story of gay love and placed it where it should be, in the mainstream. He's delivered a beautifully crafted film to boot. If we break both films down into rings, similarities exist at each level. The outermost ring is the production. Both films are based on an existing IP, a novel, and a short story. The films are set in a different time period to the one that they are released into. The plot of Maurice begins in 1909, and the film was made 78 years later. The plot of Brokeback Mountain begins in 1963, and the film was made 42 years later. The films also move at a similar pace, taking their time with the audience and chew on the scenery. The next level is the story. Both contain obviously gay romances between men. There is a brunette and a blonde guy in each, of which both come from similar upbringings. Their society does not agree with their lifestyle and so their romance must be kept secret. One of the men is more open to the idea of being together and the other is left in a status of regret at the end of the film. And at the innermost ring is the theme, and it is here where we will spend most of our time, as it is where the most interesting intersections and divergences between the two stories take place. Maurice follows in suit with several themes that other Merchant Ivory productions touch on, primarily class relations and repression. This is seen most clearly through the characters of the middle class Maurice and his lower class lover Alec, Scudder. Pardon me, sir. Um Will the gentleman be shooting tomorrow? The relationship between the two is not only taboo for their same sex, but that they exist in separate class systems. At first, it would seem that Maurice's solidarity with his class survives beyond the first night that he sleeps with Scudder. While naked in bed together, Maurice is open with Scudder and calls him by his first name, Alec. But this intimacy is purely in the moment as Maurice leaves Scudder to go back to London, and when Scudder comes to town to confront Maurice, Maurice addresses him by Scudder instead of Alec in front of his work colleagues. Scudder, is it? Alec, you're a dear fellow, you said. You did. In the novel Maurice, the class divide is heightened even more. Intimacy with a social inferior? Unthinkable. The subject of inner class and inner sex relations are greatly intertwined, which sets Maurice apart from many other films that deal with the repression of the class system in that it is doubled with the repression of homosexuality at the time. I needn't remind you that your sort were once put to death in England. I would advise you to live in some country, France, Italy, or Homosexuality is no longer criminal. Brokeback Mountain sees a similar theme of repression, but draws it from masculinity. Jack and Ennis both must suppress their feelings for one another in order to live their lives adequately, something that was aided by their own internalized homophobic concepts of masculinity instilled in them from their fathers. You know I ain't queer. Me neither.
over the course of the film, both Jack and Ennis fall into the typical trappings of what they see to be a traditionally masculine lifestyle, both marry to women, settle down, and have children. However, it is at the moment when Jack and Ennis get to rekindle their love that their lives of traditional masculinity begin to crumble. Ennis pulls away from his wife Alma, which amounts to their eventual divorce. Jack similarly also becomes estranged from his wife Loreen as he commits adultery and feels further emasculated by her inheritance of her father's business, making her the primary breadwinner, an idea which directly goes against traditional masculinity. Did you call a school about getting him a tutor? I thought you were going to call. I complain too much. A teacher don't like me. Right. Now it's your turn. Uh, okay, fine. So I'll just, I'll call later. Jack and Ennis feel trapped within society's views on them and how they should be masculine. Maurice and Clive and Jack and Ennis can't be together as a couple because both fear persecution for acting on their love, and both films have these fears pushed to their extremes. Unlike a contemporary rom-com telling of a coming out story where the consequences, while still extreme and harmful, are family rejection, refusal, and intolerance. In Maurice and Brokeback, these consequences are imprisonment, abuse, and death. Clive begins to dissolve his love affair with Maurice after he learns of Lord Riesling being arrested and sentenced to six months hard labor after soliciting sex from a soldier. In view of the promising career in politics, which has been terminated by your disgrace, and in view of the position in society which you have forfeited, I am inclined to leniency. In Brokeback Mountain, Jack suggests that he and Ennis start a new life together on a small ranch. What if you and me had a little ranch somewhere, a little cow and calf operation? Be sweet life. But Ennis refuses and tells Jack the story of these two old guys who lived on a ranch together, and despite being a pretty tough old bird, were killed for living together. Ennis's father took him when he was nine to look at the dead body of one of the men, and even suggested that it was possibly his father who had done it. Anyway, they, they found Earl dead in an irrigation ditch, and took a tie around to him, spurred him up and drug him around by his dick till it pulled off. These events are presented as the main reason that the two couples don't live together. They are taken as cautionary tales on how to move through life. While the threat may be similar in both films, the love between each couple is not. In Brokeback, the love starts as sexual, rough, and facilitated by alcohol. Their intimacy is driven through the physical. Whereas in Maurice, the love begins as purely emotional and rarely reaches any physical point, especially not to the aspect of Ennis and Jack. The love between Maurice and Clive is non-physical, much like the unspeakable vice of the Greeks, as Clive believes that physical intimacy would ruin their love. I think it would spoil everything. This in turn speaks to the larger difference between these two films, which is their genre. Maurice falls under the label of heritage film, and while the term heritage film is used as more of a critical label rather than a film genre, for the purpose of this essay I will consider it its genre, as drama is too vague. Heritage films are generally adapted from classic literary novels, which are set pre-war. There is a large aesthetic approach to the films with the scenery and costuming, and they often deal with class relations. Maurice fits all of these categories. Heritage films were very popular in the late 20th century and are criticized for romanticizing a time in British history. It is thought that the popularity of these films in a time like the 80s and 90s came about because of the British industrial decline and political and social unrest. The films were able to remind and perhaps even let the public escape into the nostalgic image of Britain back in a time when it was prosperous and powerful. Brokeback Mountain is in a completely different genre to Maurice. Even though it is not quite a western in all its themes, it has enough of the hallmarks to sufficiently feel like one of those films. There are cowboys, herding, bull riding, and camping in the vast American landscape. 
The Western genre has been popular in cinema since the inception of film itself. Michael Agresta states in his article for The Atlantic that through the past century of Western films, we can trace America's self-image as it evolved from a rough and tumble but morally confident outsider in the world affairs to an all-powerful sheriff with a guilty conscience. Agresta theorizes that the Western genre evolves with American history. Genres will often do this with films, as cinema reflects the cultural zeitgeist of the time, so will genres. The horror genre is another one that is also cited as evolving throughout history, to depict what specifically may horrify audiences in the moment. The significance that these two genres, heritage and western, have to their respected films is their connection to where they are set. Heritage films have strong connections to Englishness, and this is seen within Maurice. The setting is not just in England, but in very English environments such as country estates, stockbroker offices, the British Museum, and Cambridge. Heritage is not historical in the sense of seeking knowledge about the past. Instead, it exhibits a modern-day use of elements of the past that projects a shared cultural memory in which a desired past is preserved. Heritage films show us a desired Englishness of the past, and Maurice places queer characters at the center of it. Western films have strong connections to Americana, and this is seen within Brokeback Mountain. Despite an increasingly cynical, media-wise audience that can spot and often dismiss established generic icons, the Western archetype of the cowboy still possesses power as a symbol of American courage, strength, capability, and masculinity. I take Wyoming. Hey, I'm not gonna keep it down. I got two little girls here. Fuck you. <laughs> Despite the difference in their genres, the films are utilizing them to the same effect. They're using the classic and well-liked genres, heritage and western, as a shoehorn to slide queer themes, stories, and struggles into mainstream cinema. I thought about making this a spoiler-free video, but that would mean that I wouldn't be able to talk about the ends of the films, which I believe would be a disservice to the comparison as the two slightly diverge. While we end on characters in a state of remembrance on their gay lovers, the divergence is Maurice having a happier ending than Brokeback Mountain. Not to say that one is better than the other, but ultimately love triumphs in Maurice in a way that it doesn't in Brokeback Mountain. Film critic Roger Ebert saw the ending of Maurice as a disappointment. He felt that the film's sentiment that love conquers all to be a fantasy. Ebert says that Maurice and Alec have virtually nothing in common and that by arguing that their decision to stay together was good and courageous thing, Maurice seems to argue that the most important thing about them was their homosexuality. While I agree with Ebert, perhaps it's the more daring choice to allow these characters to end up together. We see all the time how these sorts of stories could end. In fact, we see that in Brokeback Mountain. Ebert says that sometimes love does not conquer all. In fact, not usually. Jack's fate is actually quite ambiguous. The film doesn't present it as factually happening. While Jack's wife describes one thing, the audience sees another. We are to understand that this is Ennis's imagining of what had happened. Whether it actually happened to Jack or not isn't what's important in the film, or to the audience, as we see it happen anyway. The entire film is fiction, so when we see a fictional event play out in a fictional setting that we are choosing to believe is real, the effect will still be real. Jack's death is seen as a real hate crime against him being gay, befalling a similar fate to what had stopped Ennis from wanting to settle down with Jack in the first place. Both endings are impacting in their own way, that serve not only the story but the world in which these films are being released into. As stated earlier, audiences were enthralled to see Maurice, a film about queer men, have it end with the two lovers being together. It would have been refreshing in 1987. While heritage films may be taking English audiences away from a declining UK, Maurice was taking queer audiences away from a time where many within the community were dying, and showed them that, in spite of adversity, love can come through, if only in the fictional world of cinema. Brokeback Mountain tenderly brings together these two men and shows the evolution of their love and the impact it has on their worlds as it takes a sympathetic look at the wives. With Jack's death, 
Audiences see the dangers in being queer, which resonate in the minds of the audiences with the real life stories of the 1998 murder of Matthew Shepard in Wyoming and the 1993 murder of Brandon Tina in Nebraska. Both of these films have their own lasting legacy in queer cinema. While there of course exists big differences in the two, there is a fundamental aspect that is lying beneath both. We can see how genres specifically linked to a country's identity can target and penetrate the inequality and prejudices seen on both sides of the pond. But what has struck me the most about analyzing these two films is the total inescapability of love and the pain and regret that it brings.